Hi, I'm Dr. Rob Silverman, Amazon best-selling author, Inside Out Health, host of Proven Health Alternatives. I've got a great guest for you, elite professional race car driver, Lawson Ashenbach. He talks all about what it's like to be a race car driver. You're gonna be shocked at how hard they have to work out and his personal story, his story about having Crohn's disease and how he almost couldn't continue as a race car driver till he met a functional medicine doc Change his lifestyle. Stay tuned. Hey everybody, Dr. Rob here, Improving Health Alternatives. I have elite professional race car driver, Lawson Aschenbach. How you doing? I'm good, I'm good. Thanks for having me on. Oh, my pleasure, my pleasure. How you feeling? I'm good, uh, thanks to you. <laughs> I'm feeling, <laughs> feeling, feeling better than ever and uh, you know, uh, this is sort of the tail end of our season right now. So my body goes through quite a bit throughout the last, you know, eight or nine months. And, um, this has been by far the best, the best year from a physical standpoint and, um, you know, ready to attack the last two races and hopefully ended on a high note. You know, I've got a list of questions that I wrote and one just came to mind. So sorry if I'm a little extemporaneous, no tell problem. everybody, you know, uh, what you do as a race car driver and, and do me a favor before we go to your condition, tell them your training. Cause everybody says race car driver, athlete or not athlete. And I told them, yeah, you're smiling. <laughs> Cause they tease you about that all the time. Um, that I think your heart rate, yours as a race car driver goes up the second highest at any athletic event. So tell a little bit about what that is. I think people would really want to know. Well, it's a great question. And I think the first thing I should do is maybe explain the conditions of what, what I'm in when I'm actually driving. And so inside the cockpit of these cars, um, you know, it can be as high as 130, 135 degrees on hot days. And on top of that, we've got, you know, a fireproof suit, fireproof underwear, a helmet on, you know, gloves, shoes, the whole nine yards to protect us from the safety perspective. And, you know, as you can imagine, it gets extremely hot. And, um, you know, that's why I'm constantly training. That's why I'm constantly you know, pushing myself from a physical standpoint year in and year out to try to take my game to another level to be able to withstand those temperatures and those problems a lot better. And, uh, and so from the training perspective, you know, I'm doing a lot of running, uh, whether it's intervals or long runs outside in the Florida heat, you know, it could be 90 some degrees out here and I'm busting out a 90 minute, maybe two hour run. Uh, not to mention the fact that we're doing a lot of lifting, uh, a lot of sauna treatments, uh, you know, 25 minutes in a sauna while doing yoga. Um, you know, stuff like cold tubs in the morning to try to get that thermogenesis down. And, uh, you know, a variety of other things like Muay Thai, biking, and you name it, I do it. And it's, you know, sometimes once or twice a day I'm working out just to try to stay fit throughout the year and, you know, making sure that I can, uh, you know, keep my game at, at a high level. You know, it's great that you were able to do that because, again, most people don't realize the training that a professional race car driver has to go through. They think like you're uh, – just getting in a car and driving fast on a highway. Okay. And um, <laughs> you know, it, it, I tell them, you know, having met you, the, I mean, I think you guys train as much as any athlete. I mean, right. you practice your sport. You, I mean, you practice driving. Absolutely. I mean, it, you know, it, it depends on, I mean, you got to look, when you look at everything as a whole, so we're doing races that sometimes are an hour long, sometimes are 24 hours long, multiple drivers, multiple stints. So I might be in a car for two to three hours at a time sometimes. And, and you can imagine that the mental fatigue gets, gets pretty high when you're tired or you've been in the car for a long time. And so training yourself to keep that low heart rate is really important. Not to mention the fact that I also do some stuff outside the car, like simulator training, um, you know, reaction timing. Um, you know, I've done stuff like the D2 machine, which is a light system that you're constantly moving your hands around to push buttons to try to get peripheral vision and so forth. I mean, there's so many things we're doing nonstop to try to, you know, like I said, it's, it's always about pushing yourself, pushing the limits and trying to get better. And, and I, uh, I, you know, I really enjoy doing that. That's outstanding. Now, um, I'm curious. One more question before I get into all about your condition. Yeah. The car. So I've got a Beamer. A couple of my friends over here, they think Porsche is the car. Uh, yeah, you're smiling. Could you tell some people that the cars that you drive are a little different than the proverbial aesthetic sports cars that we see on the highway? So, for sure. So... I, right now, I race in two different series. So uh, one of the programs is an Acura NSX, uh, which is a you know high-performance sports car. The other program is a Chevrolet Camaro. And uh, the Acura NSX is, is highly modified, you know, a lot of carbon fiber bits, uh, different brake systems, 
We got racing trash control, racing ABS, um, tons of aerodynamics, downforce, um, you name it, we've got it. You know, different suspension stuff from a from a spring, from shock, from sway bars. So there, there's so much that goes into these cars to try to make them fast and, and not only reliable, um, you know, and something that's you know quite easy on the tire because we do long stints. It can be up to an hour long. So these cars are are not your everyday average car that you see on the street, but the cool thing about sports car racing, and this is really important is something that I push with a lot of people is we are actually racing the cars that you can buy, you know, and drive on the street. So it really drives on that point of win on Sunday, buy on Monday. And, and that's, you know, what the manufacturers care about. So it's, it's a fun sport. It's really exciting. I suggest a lot of people, you know, try it out, look at it and, uh, you know, enjoy the, enjoy the show. That's great. Drive on Sunday and buy on Monday. Wow. Honda. No. Wow. The Camaro. I remember those Camaros. They had the dice on the, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, you were diagnosed with Crohn's disease yes. and um, why don't you just tell everybody how it affected your career as a professional race car driver? So I was diagnosed early 2012, but before that time, you know, let's say the, the four or five years before I actually, actually got the diagnosis. You know, it was a bit of a mess. I, I had digestive issues my entire life ever since middle school. Um, you know, I noticed after eating lunch, uh, you know, at, at school, I'd be in my, uh, with my friends in math class and I'd start having gas issues. And, and it was, you know, quite embarrassing <laughs> when you're that young and dealing with that. But, you know, fast forward a number of years and I'm 34 right now. But, you know, uh, before 2012, um, you know, I was lethargic. I was tired all the time. I mean, I, I wasn't recovering from my workouts. I was dizzy when I was either driving on the street or even more when I was driving a race car. Um, I felt like my, my, the mental capacity I had to, to really focus was not there. Um, and obviously, as you can imagine, at 180 miles an hour, you know, having mental fatigue or, or, or a, a lack of, um, or a lapse in judgment uh, can be pretty catastrophic. So it was a very scary time in my life. Uh, you know, I'm glad things got worked out, but it, it, it was a long process. It was, uh, you know, a lot of, you could say blood, sweat and tears. <laughs> and, uh, you know, finally, after a number of years, I was finally able to get that diagnosis, understand it, and then figure out what I needed to do to, uh, you know, try to beat this disease. That's outstanding. I mean, it's amazing. So many uh, athletes now are realizing they have gut compromise. Um, uh, Djokovic found out that he had a gluten issue and he went off gluten. And since then he's won every one of his majors. Right. You as a professional athlete, an elite professional athlete right. has mentioned that. And um, what most people don't understand about that is uh, over two hours of continuous exercise, you compromise your gut. Yeah. So uh, what a great start. If anybody does any sports nutrition to start working with their athletes and keeping their gut in great pristine condition. Um, how did the functional medicine change your life? Functional medicine, I mean, I, you know, sometimes I go as far to say that it saved my life because at the time that I was diagnosed, you know, I, I, like I said, I was a mess. I mean, I was, I was looking for answers. I didn't know what was going on. You know, I was, I was just all over the place. And um, after my diagnosis for about a month, all I took was a prescribed pharmaceutical from my GI doctor. And it sadly was not working and things were actually continuing to get worse. So, you know, you can imagine the stress of that is, okay, I'm diagnosed, I'm taking a pharmaceutical, it's not working. Now what do I do? And I was about to go back into the office to uh, probably get prescribed something a lot harsher, uh, maybe, you know, something that was a, an injection or, or whatever you have it. And around, right around that time, my friend who has colitis, quite bad, uh, introduced me to a functional medicine nutritionist. And that's when I was introduced to this entire world of, of, of uh, I guess, healthcare that I didn't even know existed. And within 24 to 48 hours of, of, of starting the protocol, which was a supplementation protocol, a diet pro protocol, and sort of a lifestyle protocol, uh, my entire life changed. You know, I was, I was, I was happier. I was, um, I had a lot more energy. My gut issues calmed way down, probably 80 to 90%. And ever since that time, not only have I gotten better and better, but then being able to work with people like yourself 
ha- have been able to take my game to a whole other level and so to the point where I can go nine months in a season and travel all around the country and in the you know in the Canada um, and not have a flare up. And so I, I've been fortunate to not have a flare up basically ever since I was, you know, uh, well, not technically diagnosed, but when I first started functional medicine. So, um, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm a big believer and, uh, you know, big advocate for that type of healthcare. Fantastic. It's great to hear. Um, and how much has your performance increased since you, you know, changed your lifestyle? I would say probably after about a year uh, of really working with, you know, a functional medicine doctor, um, I felt that I was driving better than ever. And I think it shows in the results. You know, I've, I think ever since 2012, I've won, yeah, I can't even remember. I think uh, four or five championships at this point. Um, you know, my, my focus level within the car is at an all time high. My ability to push myself in races, especially endurance races, where if I need to do that third stint, which is, you know, a total of three hours in a car, uh, you know, I can do that. And, and not to mention the fact that let's say we're in a 24 hour race and I do a two hour stint, I hop out and I need to get in a couple hours later. My recovery times are so fast that I feel like I can drive, you know, longer if I had to. And especially, you know, when you think about the end of the race, the last three or four hours of a 24 hour race are some of the most important. You kind of need to get to that point at first and then it's showtime. And, and, and I feel like every time I've been put in that position, I have that energy and that stamina to, to try to push hard and go for the win. So, um, you know, that's just a small snippet of everything, but you know, I, I feel personally that I I'm driving better than ever and I feel like I keep getting better. So it's, it's pretty awesome. So, um, give me a few of your biohacks, man. I, I, I know you're a pretty bright guy. You're pretty educated. You do some things on your own and procedures that you've used and that you've used that of suggestions of others to stay in remission and be compliant with your protocols because compliance is key. Yes. Yes. And I, I think that's something that I needed to learn uh, before. Well, within the first couple of months, I guess, of, of working with a functional doctor, you know, it was really important that I stayed compliant with the fact that I was traveling all the time. And, and before this point, I was sort of self-prescribing, self-diagnosing, changing things left and right all the time. And so you start to learn procedures that you can put into place that allow you to never miss a day, never miss a beat, I guess. And uh, for instance, so when I travel, everything is pre-measured, whether it's a medical food or uh, you know, fish oil or vitamin D or whatever, any types of vitamins, everything's pre-measured in, in particular containers that allow me to make it quick, make it easy in the morning, you know, bring a blender bottle with me, throw the powders in there, fill the water up shake it up and drink it with my, with my vitamins and other, um, you know, supplements. So stuff like that, which is really easy. And there's a product called go stack out there from blender bottle that I, that I love. And I think that's a great, great thing to use. Uh, but on top of that, you know, I've been starting to work on the training and, and physical conditioning side and a few sort of hacks. I've learned this through people like yourself or, um, you know, other, um, I guess you could call them biohackers, if you will. But uh, I, I'm a big believer in, in thermogenesis and, and making sure you put your body in these extreme types of heat because, again, that's what I'm dealing with. So um, a handful of days a week, I'm hitting a sauna, you know, and trying to get up there to 180, 180 degrees. You know, I'll be in there for, you know, say 20 to 30 minutes, and I could be doing yoga or maybe just relaxing depending on what my workout was, was that day. So that's one big thing that I'm, I'm a big believer in, whether you're – an athlete or just, you know, uh, a, a, a professional or whatever you, whatever you're doing. I think that's a really, really good thing for your body. Um, not to mention the fact that every morning I hop in a 40 degree cold tub. Uh, so I sort of, uh, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's interesting, but, um, you know, this cold tub, it does a lot of things too. It helps the hormone release, um, you know, works with infl- inflammation. And, you know, for me, I'm not, a huge believer in caffeine. I try to stay away from it, although I do drink a little bit of coffee or a little bit of tea here and there. But that cold tub in the morning, you want to talk about getting woken up uh, and getting you know ready for the day. So uh, those those are just a couple of things. There's many more I could go on forever, but uh, I'm a big believer about you know trying to pinpoint little things you can make better and and work on them as much as you can because you, you never know what you'll find and, and you'd be surprised what a minor change can do to your performance level. It's truly lifestyle. I mean, it was diet for you. Uh, yep. It was some supplementation. 
Yeah. Um, and it was lifestyle. Um, when was the last time you had some gluten? I'm just kidding. Couldn't tell you. <laughs> Couldn't tell you, right? So it's fun. I'm, I'm happy you mentioned that. So the biggest problem I have when, when I talk to patients is no gluten. And um, yeah. And they're like, well, I can't do it. Is it hard? Or is it like the easiest thing ever? You know, and I, I, when I talk to people with, with gut issues all the time, it's amazing how they say, well, I can't have my, I can't go a day without eating bread or I can't go a day without having, you know, 24 ounces of coffee or whatever it may be. And you'd be surprised that if you eat out, you can make these decisions that are, are so important to your compliance. And that is basically, you know, find alternatives. I mean, you can eat more fat. Um, you can stick to things like rice, um, sweet potatoes, um, you know, corn in certain places. But, you know, I, th- I, I, I'm a, I feel that anybody that thinks they can't eat gluten um, really needs to, to take a seat, you know, start reading some articles, and, and you'll be able to find some simple, simple changes that you can make. You know, and in the end, too, do we really need bread? Like, do you really need gluten? Is it something that's really that important? So when you get at it, when you, when you really look at your food and, and what you're eating daily, you know, when you stick to the whole foods, um, things that are in their whole form, not modified, this and that, whatever, um, you'd be surprised that you can just have, you know, simple meals that are made quickly, uh, especially after a long day of work or in the morning when you don't have a lot of time that allow you to eliminate gluten. So, um, yes, I feel like gluten is a very easy thing to eliminate and, and it shouldn't be a problem for anybody. Music to my ears. No gluten, no processed food, no sugar. We've heard that one before. Um, I actually have one question, um, and it wasn't what I wrote. So, again, I'm going to catch you off guard. Um, Sorry. A lot of people don't realize that you're a spokesperson for Crohn's disease, and you do make some appearances. And um, why don't you tell everybody where they can get in touch with you? So if they're interested, there's a lot of people suffering from, I think it's about a third of the world suffering from a celiac issue, whether it be non-sensitivity or not. And um, tell them what you're doing in reference to that. So uh, I'll tell you a couple of things. First off, where you can reach me is on my website at www.lawsonashenbach.com. Um, obviously all over social media, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And my handle is Lawson A Racing, all one word, no dashes or anything else. But um, you'll find on my website, there's a few blogs I've written about my story and about what I've gone through and some people I've worked with to, to get better, like Dr. Silverman, who's, who's been instrumental in, in helping me. Um, but I'm a big believer in telling my story, you know, and, and although we didn't get into sort of the more graphic stuff of what I dealt with, uh, you've seen some of the pictures. Maybe we can even post them, you know, on this uh, on this uh, video. But you know, I, I went through a lot. It, it was it was a very difficult time in my life, and you know, there was a lot of things that I've learned along the way. Some of which I've just talked about that I like to share with people. So I've been at a few speaking engagements, uh, whether that's with uh, supplement companies or Crohn's and Colitis Foundation, um, and and it's just about. One, listening to people, listening and understanding their problems, you know, sometimes providing suggestions of what maybe helped me in, in, in that perspective. Um, and I think, you know, also the blogging has been really important as well because, you know, it, it allows me to tell that story. It's out there and, um, you know, a variety of people can share it and talk about their own story as well. So um, all in all, I uh, really love getting out there and talking about it and uh, hope to uh, you know, help as many people as possible. Outstanding. That was great. So uh, here we are. That was a great. So everything you mentioned, we're, we're going to have, we're going to add at the end. Anybody wants to get in touch with Lawson, he's great. We've lectured together and uh, we've worked together and um, no one does a better uh, aerial die type of presentation than Lawson. And um, I think everybody can benefit from working with an elite athlete because the one thing that my takeaway was how compliant you were and how willing you were to do anything. You know, if I told him to drink motor oil, no pun intended, uh, he would have done that. And I think for all of the patients out there and all the doctors listening, that collaboration was really where the sweet spot was for us. And hopefully it is for everybody else who has this issue because so many people have gut issues and it it changes their life. Uh, Number one reason uh, for fatigue is a gut issue. Uh, I mean, there are people that have come in and uh, run into the laboratory six to eight times a day, can't get a job, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, you've really been great. I've got all your stuff, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, uh, at Lawson Racing, website, Lawson Ashenbach. Let me spell that for everybody, 
A-S-C-H-E-N-B-A-C-H.com. It takes me a while to get it to, and I've only known you for X amount of years. I really appreciate you coming on. Let's definitely do it again and um, absolutely get over 200 miles an hour. That sounds awesome. Sounds good to me, man. Thank you for having me on. Really appreciate All right. it. Always a pleasure. Guys, Lawson Ashenbach, professional race car driver, Dr. Rob, Proven Health Alternatives, always yours in health.